if I can get favor with which I feel that God has granted me favor with him, if I can find your confidence, I'm sure there'll be something that'll happen during the meeting that you'll understand that God is with us. Now, many has made great statements, and you've seen it in your newspapers and magazines and so forth, saying, Brother Branham, the divine healer. Well, there is no such a thing as that. There's no man as the divine healer. There's only one healer. That's Christ, the Son of God. He's the healer, God. Man only represent healing. They represent Christ. They represent healing. Every person that represents Christ should represent healing, for it's in him that we're healed. And then many of them, of course, can't fathom the, the thought of a gift. The Bible said he ascended on high and give gifts to man. And everything that we do must purely be of the Scripture. If it is the Scripture background, then it isn't right. But anything that's based upon the Scripture, is you can listen to it. And if it's God, God will testify of it. If it isn't God, then God will not testify. Just the man will testify, and God will not. But if it be God, God will testify for himself. We're having services each afternoon, just to give you a little from the platform here before the crowds gather in tonight. I thought I'd usually take this the first night to kind of explain some of the things that the people might know in each one of you. I want you to help me. For I realize that this meeting will we'll have to everyone answer at the day of judgment for this meeting. Each one. I've got to answer for it. I've got to answer for what I say. I've got to answer for what I do. And then as I bring Christ to you, he'll be on your hand, and you'll have to answer for what attitude you took towards it. If you turned it down or if you accepted it, you, God will have you to answer for your attitude at this meeting. So we must realize it's a very sacred thing. Brother Lindsay and Brother Moore as representing the, they are the managers of the meeting. They represent two denominations of the uh, holiness people. Myself, I don't belong to any denomination. I once was a Baptist, and by their desire, I'm not anymore, because that I teach divine healing and gifts of healing and the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And I know it's the truth. <clears throat> So when they turned me out there, the holiness people accepted me and said they'd been praying for that gift to come to their church for 40 years or more. So I, God just put me where I belong. Not that I have anything against any denomination, because that I see that God's no respect a person. He heals the Methodist, Baptist, Catholic, Pentecost, and all. God don't respect your church affiliation. He expects your faith, respects your faith in Him. He doesn't even, in healing, you don't even have to be a Christian to be healed. But in order to stay healed, you have to become a Christian. Go ye and sin no more, or a worse thing than this will come upon you. So you, I've seen many times the callous saints come through the prayer line, men and women who's lived godly and fail to be healed. When prostitutes on the street would come through the, bill, the line and be healed. It depends on your faith. In the days when the Master was here, the priests who were holy men, they had to be holy. They could not be a priest without being holy. They had to be a scholar of the Word. There was no man could point a finger of scorn towards them because they were a holy, righteous man. And they fail to receive the blessings at sometimes the Gentiles and unbelievers who seen Jesus and seen his works, believed and he healed them when priests and so forth couldn't be healed. Many of them understood him. The common people heard him gladly. And it's a great deal that way today. But I've noticed the peoples, all denominations almost tend the meetings. We even have the Orthodox, the Jews, Greek, Catholic, and all types. But God never respects any different denomination. He just respects the faith that's in the individual. 
I can if you believe, he said. And then he said, go and sin no more, or worse thing come upon you. So therefore, in order to obtain your healing, you'll have to become a Christian after you're healed. And I believe I would say this, talking of the dual atonement, when you are healed, your sins are forgiven you. I didn't hear very many amens on that, but it's the truth. And confess your false one to another and pray you one for another that you may be healed. Go ye and sin no more, or a worse thing come upon you. Jesus said, Which is it easier to do? Say thy sins be forgiven thee, or take up thy bed and walk. It's all on the same. And so I believe in James 5.14. That if any among you sick, let them call the elders of the church. Let them anoint them in oil and pray over them. The prayer of faith shall save the sick. They've done any sin, it shall be forgiven them. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed. That's the duty of every Christian minister. Every minister of the gospel has a right to pray for his congregation, and they have a right to believe God and be healed. Divine healing doesn't belong to one man or one group. It belongs to all the people. The gift of healing was not given to be sent out to have different healing campaigns across the country. It's all right for them to be. But that isn't the purpose. There ought to be a healing campaign in every church all the time, going on everywhere. Many people get the wrong impression on these meetings. They think because the evangelist is there or the someone praying for the sick, when he's gone, all the healing virtue is gone. God covers the earth. Your pastor, leaves your pastor like you. What's the matter with my pastor? He can't do that. Well, friends, that's the wrong impression to have. Your pastor, if he's a godly man, he, his prayers will be answered just the same as any evangelist or anybody claiming any gift or anything else. He's a man of God, and you should respect him that way and believe in him. And God will answer your answer his prayer. He said, confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you might be healed. Not only every person in a measure that's got the Holy Spirit has the gift of healing. In a measure. Every apple that's in the tree is in the tree when it's a sprig no more than that. When it's a little bitty branch set in the ground, every bloom that'll ever be in the tree is in it right then. The blooms don't come down out of the air. The bloom don't come up through the ground. The bloom's already in the tree. The apple's already in it. The tree's planted in the ground, and the only thing it has to do is drink. And when it goes to drinking, it has to drink more in its potion, and it spreads out, pushes out. And that's the way we're planted in Christ Jesus to the inexhaustible fountain of life, and we start drinking, and the more we drink, we just push out. That's right. It brings out these elements, and the gift that God's called you to, well, just the trouble of it is you don't drink. That's right. You don't drink. He's, don't you believe he's the inexhaustible fountain of life? Come to me, all ye ends of the world, and drink. The devil don't care how much you come as long as you don't drink. See? You come and drink. That's what this meeting's for now, for you to drink. There's a fountain open, flowing freely everywhere. Just drink till you just can't drink no more. The tree, if it just drinks to what it was allotment, why, well, it just always stay in the drought. That's what's matter with the Christians. They don't drink enough. You want to drink till you just spread out and let somebody else see it. See? Push out. Get a testimony. Commit it to God. Believe it. Step out on it. Claim God's promise. Just com commit it to God. Believe it. Commit thy ways unto the Lord. <laughs> He'll bring you to pass whatever you want. But he can't do it until as long as you're holding it and saying, I'll see if I'm any better or see if this will work. You commit it to him. Forget about the rest of it. Go testifying of things you don't even see. You believe it. It's not what you see, it's what you believe. Not what you feel. He never did say, did you feel it? He said, did you believe it? That's how you're saved is by faith. That's how you're healed is by faith. And faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things you don't see, taste, feel, smell, or hear. You just believe it. Act upon it as though it was. Amen. I get started on that. We probably would have a prayer line up and down the aisle somewhere, wouldn't I? But that's what we must do in this meeting. Now concerning the way the meeting's carried on, the meeting is, we conduct it to the best of our knowledge. 
They, I spend most of my time prayer. I have to. And the last time I was here, when I was having services here with the Brother Brown, down here at the Pentecostal Church, just below the Capitol, we would pray till way in the morning. By the way, there's something happened there in that church one night that I testified about it across the country. It was the most pathetic sight I ever seen. I'll refer to it later on. Probably the person will be here. Is a woman on her back down in the floor, down in the basement. I'll never forget the night. I just wonder, if that woman's in the building, would you just raise your hand? I just wonder if she's here anywhere. I hope she gets to come to the meeting. I didn't see her hand just a, now, but she was on her back crawling. I've been in insane institutions when I'd see young women use a bed and wash their face and everything else, but I, I never seen anything so pathetic as that. And I've always thought since that time, of course, I, I, my ministry is just a few months old, and I've always thought since then that being the people here and around Little Rock were so uh, responded to the meeting that I've always wanted to come back to Little Rock again. Now, great things has happened to the gifts since then, and I'll explain it in a moment. It's way greater than it was, and now God is testifying everywhere of it. Now, we come down to the service in the afternoon in order to to get, I would that every person that could, if you're not, if you're not so in work that you can't, when you come down to the service in the, in the afternoon and attend the afternoon services for the man, Mr. Lindsay and the managers, they speak of how to approach healing. And it's good for you that you do that and get ready for the service. And then another thing I want you to remember, that we used to be, we had what we call the fast lines. How many remember the old fast lines we used to have? Oh my, not a stranger here by a long ways. So we used to have those fast lines that never did prove out right. And when, I, when God added the other part to the gift, I promised him that I would, wouldn't have no more fast lines. And we don't have nothing but just the line, the real prayer line of healing. And many times we try to show the people we will before it's left, if the Lord blesses us the way I trust that he will, that I want to get all your God-saved pastors together for one of the meetings so that you people will see that your pastor is a man of God and see that he has the same authority to lay hands upon the sick if you believe it. Now, here's the way we do. We come down, my brother, brother in flesh, he's just back out of the Navy, spent four years in the World War II, and was laid up to be a perfect, total, disabled the rest of his life, never to move from a chair. Sitting out in, from New York there on one of the Long Island hospital. When the best doctors the United States Navy had said, you're finished for life, you'll lay there, or you can't never get away from there. Three bowels of his heart was closed with rheumatic fever. He shell-shocked. From, went into Casablanca, and two-thirds of the convoy was tore up. And he lay there screaming at the top of his voice when he could scream, and crying for Mother and me, and Mother had to sign a release to get him get him to send him home, and she'd be responsible if he died on the road home. And when he got home, he said, All I want to see is my brother to pass by me. Here he is. Perfect hell. Instead of returning to the Lord like he should have done, he'd become an acrobat. Went out doing acrobatical work, and the Lord dealt with him for that and sent him back. <laughs> so now he's helping me here in the services. Here's the way we try to do it. We used to. We tried sending cards in the ministers, let them give them to their congregations. Well, the, that caused an argument among the ministers. One's congregation, the first minister got his congregation started, that finished the service while we were there, because we take time to be sure that every person's healed before we leave them on a platform. No matter what's wrong with them, we stay at the platform till that person's healed. No matter how bad they're crippled, twisted, deaf, dumb, blind, or whatever they are, we stay right there till God heals that person. And we seen that didn't work. We had a fast line that were, wasn't right there. 
And we found this to be the best that we've ever had because it was revealed to me by the Holy Spirit. We go down to the congregation, I send my brother, and he has 50 prayer cards every day, and he gives out those prayer cards. Then they got to find it. If you give me number one, number two, number three, if they get over past 15 or 20, well, they didn't want the prayer cards anymore. And they would rally for that prayer cards and almost run him wild if they didn't get that prayer card, especially in big meetings where many, many thousands are attending. So then the Holy Spirit spoke to me and had me to do it this way. We just give out 50 prayer cards, and no one knows just where the line will start. I come in and have some little kid or count so many in a row or something like that, divide it with so many and start at a certain number. And he doesn't know, I don't know, no one knows. And it's for, whether it's local people, used to we just give the local people while the people coming from a distance didn't have a chance. Maybe they sold their cow or, or their canned goods to get to the meeting. Didn't do no good then, just the local people. So we make it fair to all. Just give out the cards and ever who gets them, that's all right. One man might have number one, think he'd be the first in line. It might start at 40. We don't know till we come to the platform and let God decide it. Then we choose so many out of there, and the one that the Lord has ordained to call comes into the line for that night. The next night, the next evening, they give out more cards. And doing so that way, then we keep it equal. Everybody coming in to say, well, this person coming in, if they don't get a card today, they're going to die tomorrow. Well, that gives every fellow a chance, just wherever the Lord would call. And now since the new thing has been added to the gift, then it speaks it out in the audiences and everywhere and calls the people. Now, I want to read just a text of oh, Scripture here. So you come every afternoon now to receive your prayer card. Be prayerful. How many will pray about the meeting? Now, let's see your hands. Now, it's your meeting, friend, and we're here to try to help you all we can. Now, I realize at this anointing, I have nothing to do with it. It comes itself. If it doesn't come, I walk off the platform. I wouldn't stay here at all because the statements and the claims that I make, there has to be a supernatural being there to perform that. Man cannot do that. And many of you, uh, in the other meeting when I was here, it would pick up diseases by holding the people's hand. How many remembers that? And how many remembers that I said that the angel that met me told me that it would come to pass if I'd be reverent that way, that he would give me another sign like he did Moses, the two signs to prove to the people, that it would tell the secrets of their hearts. How many remembers that I said that would come to pass? See, in the meeting, Patrick. Well, now, that has come to pass. This is about the fifth meeting since it happened. It come all at once. And then... In the third meeting, where it was being manifested, the great angel of God, who has been seen by thousands that come to the platform, he permitted me the other night to stand by his side and have his picture taken with me. It's the first time in all human history that anything like that ever happened. And I'm very happy tonight to know that he did that. And I'm going to work for him and do all I can is while I'm here to serve him and to serve his people. Now, before I read the scriptures, your attitude, you help me to tell others. I won't speak after tonight, but your attitude towards the gift will determine your healing. Now, it's scientifically proven that God is with us people. His picture is here to prove. How many seen the picture? I guess this was showed here tonight. You can have one. I guess they're here. Now, that it used to be that they'd say God can't be proved scientifically. The old skeptic had said that can't get by with it no more now because it's scientifically proved that there is a supernatural being. And that supernatural being is Jesus Christ, the Son of God, His Spirit. And now those things, as someone might wonder why those things were said, the Spirit of Jesus Christ is in our midst. That's right. Remember he told Nathaniel when Philip brought him to the prayer line, he said, Thou art an Israelite, 
and who there's no guile. He said, Whence knowest thou me, Rabbi? He said, When you was under the tree before Philip called you. He said, Oh, thou art the Son of God, the King of Israel. He told him the secret of his heart. Is that right? When the woman at the well at Samaria, the Samaritan woman, he was holding a conversation with her. He said, Go get your husband. She said, I have none. He said, You say, Well, for you've had five, and the one you have now is not your husband. She said, I perceive that you're a prophet. Quickly, the disciples came. She went into the city saying, Come see a man that told me all the things I ever done. Isn't this the Christ? Now, if I told you I was John Dillinger, or the spirit of John Dillinger is on me, you look for me to have guns, act like John Dillinger. If I told you I was an artist, the spirit of a great artist was on me, you'd expect me to paint the pictures of an artist. Is that right? If I told you I was an expert mechanic and a mechanic spirit was on me, you'd expect me to know what was wrong with your car. If I tell you that I was born of the Spirit of God and the Spirit of Jesus Christ is on me, you'd expect me to do what he did, act like he did. That's his Spirit working through a human being. Do you believe that? His Spirit worked on a brass serpent one time. Do you believe that? And on the pool of Bethesda, a water chopped up, troubled water. Ever who stepped in there believing, they received their healing. Is that right? Could the water say, look what a great water I am? No. It was the angel on the water that done the healing. Not the water. The angel. When the angel went away, it was just water. Man or just man, but it's God's agency. God doesn't fall upon denominations. God doesn't fall upon mechanical devices. God, the Holy Spirit, fell upon man. Man is God's agent. And the hardest thing that God has ever had to do was to get one mortal to believe another. Do you believe that? They couldn't believe Moses. And God gave him two signs to prove to the people that he was sent from God for their deliverance. you believe that? Well, isn't he the same yesterday, today, and forever? Do you believe the angel that talked to him in the burning bush is the angel of the covenant? Was that right? All right. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's here now. And he does the same things today that he did then. And he still performs wonders and signs. He's a miraculous God. And he always worked in the miraculous way with signs and wonders. And he promised them in these last days. And we're living in the last days. We've got a right to expect them now. That's right, to bring his people together. Then when Jesus came, no mortal can say that, that he's a healer. Jesus Christ never said he was a healer, did he? He said, it's not me that doeth the works. It's my Father that dwelleth in me. He doeth the works. Is that right? Then God in Christ was the one that was reconciling the world to himself by signs and wonders. He had the signs, the, the credentials of, a Messiah, of the Messiah. And that proved his Messiahship. And if I speak to you tonight upon this, if I tell you that God has did a certain thing through a gift, I'll not speak of the gift. It'll speak for itself. And if I speak to you of Christ, you believe what I say, if it's according to the Bible. And if Christ speaks back for me, then you believe Christ. If I tell you anything, and Christ doesn't say that's so, then don't you believe it. But if I tell you something and he's done, and he testifies behind that he has done that, then you believe him. Is that fair enough? That's, now, the gift doesn't heal no one. The gift is not for healing. No more than a gospel preacher sent for saving. He can't save anyone. He can preach under power to bring people to a knowledge of the Word of God and come do their confessing, and God does the saving. Is that right? That's the same thing it is. He's, he's got a sign. He's preaching under power that brings conviction to the human heart, and they come to the altar, and by faith they accept Jesus Christ, and then find the results. Is that right? 
when they make a committal to God, commit it to Him and believe Him, and then it brings forth the results. Now, he, healing is the same way. Ministers has preached it through the years, but this is a day when God is doing something different. Now, the gift declares all diseases. Now, this is the claims. The gift declares all diseases, rebukes sins, calls the secrets of the people's hearts. And remember that any persons coming to the prayer line, if you come with unconfessed sin, remember it will be told from this platform. No matter how vulgar and bad it is, it will be told from the platform. Now, that's a great statement to make. And remember, I stand before thousands of people, but it's never failed one time. It's always been perfect. Even telling, here a few nights ago, of course, when I go under the anointing, I hardly know what I'm speaking of. They tell me a young lady comes to the platform at Beaumont, I believe it was, and was told, when I see the person standing there, it looked like they just started getting little. They go down to a certain little age, and I just begin to tell what I see happening. And it comes right on, and it's always perfect. This girl was told here a few nights ago to tell me, at the age of about 14 years old, of 15, of giving birth to a baby without being married. And also that she was enticed by some religious people, I believe, to marry a man that was, that was not in, she was in love with and caused a lot of trouble and so forth like that and about him and a whole lot of things that she had done and about before she come to the platform at a very certain place and the way it was she was praying standing praying asking God if he would heal her and was anybody there is that true is that the oh, well yes that's fine here's people that, and not only that but just you people that's been in other meetings it, it's exactly every time is that, if it is raise your hand if that's true you all know when it's when it said that's right now to witness the other people I have nothing to do with that I, I don't even know what I'm going to say and God knows that I don't know one of these people that will be in the prayer line tonight. I don't know one. But I have never seen it fail. But what God healed every person, regardless of how bad they were sick, afflicted, or whatever it was, He healed them. And not only that, but He calls out into the audiences the different things of the people out in the balconies and things. That's right. That's the truth. Now, that's the claims that I say. That does not have one thing to do with your healing. Only when the person comes to the platform, you notice the people coming tonight and every night, that is, if the Holy Spirit comes. You'll see them come to the platform, and when they get eight or ten feet away, you'll see a change come over their face. Watch the patient. Many of them even stagger, faint. I've seen them become so unconscious that have to rub their face like that. They start crying. Practically every case, real strange feeling. How many knows that's the truth in the other meaning? Now they realize there's a presence of an angel of God there. Then when I try to tell it to them, you see the picture of it here that's taken. Scientific proven that it's right. Now when they're standing there, they know they're in the presence of a supernatural being. No, it's not me. I'm just no more than it, the least of any of you. But it's just a channel who, that's working through Somebody has to declare it. And he just I just happened to be that it was he called me from my birth. I don't believe gifts are just handed out to you. The Bible said gifts and callings are without repentance. You're born with these things. You believe in foreordination? <clears throat> For everybody, but things are foreordained of God. Jesus Christ was foreordained to be the Son of God at the Garden of Eden. You believe that? Thy seed shall bruise the serpent's head. Moses was ordained of God, foreordained. When he was born, he was found a proper child. Is that right? It's true. And notice, I believe John the Baptist, 712 years before he was born, he was the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Is that right? Jeremiah, I believe it was, God said, Before you was even born, or before you was formed in your mother's wombs, I knew you and sanctified you and ordained you a prophet over the nations before he was ever born. Is that right? Gifts and callings are without repentance. And the angel appeared to Mary and told her, Zechariah and so forth, those things are real. Now, for instance, to straighten up one thing just for a moment, we'll start the prayer line within the next five or six minutes. Some people say, if the Holy Ghost has come, he leads the church. There is no such a thing as angels appearing after the 
church. So I know I'm talking to a bunch of holiness people. Someone told me here a few months ago, said, Brother Brenham, I admire you as a man, but your teaching concerning an angel coming to you, that's an error. Said, for we do not need angels now. Said, the Holy Ghost is here. <clears throat> Said, the Holy Ghost, after he come, the angels went away. That's wrong. How many believe that, that Philip had the Holy Ghost? I see your hand. Well, who was it when he was having a revival at Samaria that touched him and told him to go to the desert, Gaza? The angel of the Lord. Is that right? How many believe Peter had the Holy Ghost? Preached the sermon at Pentecost. Well, while he was in prison, not the Holy Ghost, but the angel of the Lord came in and touched him and led him outside the... Is that right? The angel of the Lord. How many believe that Paul had the Holy Ghost? When he was out on the ship, just about to go down 14 days and nights without stars, moon, or anything, or light, he went out in the gallery somewhere and prayed and come back out and said, Be of a good courage. For the angel of the Lord whose servant I am has appeared to me. Is that right? Is that right? You believe he had the Holy Ghost? How many believe John the Revelator had the Holy Ghost? The entire book of the Revelations was revealed to him by an angel. I have sent my angel to testify. And John fell down and tried to worship the angel. Is that right? He said, See it, you do it not. I am thy fellow servants of the prophet. Worship God. Is that right? The Holy Ghost dispensation come in and continued on and will continue on by the ministration of angels to the church. Truly. But there are ordained spirits of God sent from God to, to carry the, the things out. Every man with a special calling, back all through the ages, angels has visit man. Not a worship of angels. That's wrong, like Brigham Young and so forth. But an angel of God will testify to the truth of God. That's right. And it'll declare God. It won't have some kind of a mythical something and no one understands. It'll speak of Jesus Christ and testify of Jesus Christ and produce Jesus Christ to the people. Amen. I like that amen. That means so be it. And I, I like that. All right. Now, this is the angel of God sent from Jesus Christ to testify to the church that the last days are here. It doesn't heal anybody. But it will help bring your faith up to a place. And when you see a person standing here on the platform, now to all of you there, you might, how many here is to be prayed for before the meeting closes? Let's see your hand. Well, I know that's a lot over 50. But I see prayer cards all around holding their cards up. Notice, when God is doing something here on the platform, that's his attitude, attitude towards you out there also. Do you believe that? And while it's being done here on the platform, remember, if you believe with all your heart and not doubt in your heart, I'll assure you that God will pull right out and call who you are and raise you up out of the building. That's right. Out of your cot, stretcher, wherever you are. The other night, a little girl sitting there, after a minister seen him coming down, I, I seen a man coming, a minister preaching. God told him to do something. He failed to do it. And after that, started trouble. His troubles just told him, laying there at the bone grave. Happened to look to the side, I seen a man all twisted up. I seen him climbing up on his rigger, seen him tying a double sheep shank knot. I just began to tell just what I was seeing, a certain thing. Then, first thing you know, there it was, and he was healed. A little woman sitting over there like this, her arms all stretched out. I seen a mother carrying a blanket and a child, which was a spastic child. I seen the child a little later fall from the table, just began to tell, and seen this girl standing there. She had never walked, she was sitting there in a wheelchair. And then I looked, and I seen the girl going down the street, just waving to everybody, praise the Lord. And I was telling this saying this exactly what I was seeing. The girl was standing there, to stand on your feet, Jesus Christ heals you. Up she got, and down to the building she went. It never fails. It's got to be. Oh, hallelujah. When I think of it, friends, don't think I'm... And now he was crying like a man. That's true, he stood there. By the Bible said in what beauty we should design. See him standing there, don't pray in a body, standing there, tears streaking down his cheek. But all of a sudden, God came upon him. He poured into a body of wreck. There lay a man laying there, dead, rotten in the grave. Four days, skin worm was calling in and out of his body. He stood there and screamed with a loud voice, God, come forth! What was it? God looking through them tears. God speaking through them mortal lips. 
That's right. Lazarus would come forth. Lazarus would be dead. His soul was out of eternity for four days. Well, I don't know you know him, so you don't worry about that. But that man lay in there rotten in the grave of his soul for eternity. Corruption. You it's clear. The soul knew the voice of the master in that man who was dead four days. God is before him. God in his son, reconciled the way of himself. You think he was in his son? That's right. God lived in him. And he died. Christ had to die as a man. For he was a man. To redeem us back to the Father. Exactly right. Or if we just had time to lean on that just a little bit now. But at times anyway, God in his son. God in his universe. God in his in his word, God in his son, now God in his people for a few minutes. Notice, friend, God in his people. Do you believe that God's in his people? He certainly is. Oh my, notice, there was a hundred and twenty, those cowardly people, that there to go up to Jerusalem, to take God at his word, to stay there a little while. And all of a sudden, while they were up there, God came down to dwell among his people. And when he did, there were two windows, doors, and everything else out into the street. There wasn't scary anymore. For God came down that third person out into the flesh again and lives tonight in his people. Hallelujah. God himself, God the Holy Ghost, living in his people. Here a few nights ago, standing on when a minister challenged me and said, they find he and said, Brother Bram is a faker. There's nothing to him. He's a religious racketeer. There's nothing to him. Divine healing is a fake. And Brother Bram's the chief of all of them. A faker. I never said a word. I walked to the platform. I said, no, I'm not a faker. God, who is my witness, and about that time coming from the heavens, from a world of fire. Hallelujah. God, come down and permit the mechanical thing to take a picture of the Holy Ghost standing above him. God is in his people. The picture can be secure right there. We do not believe that God is in his people. Yes, sir. He's three of our hearts of the planet. It was man who were not a good man. It was man who trusted God, who believed God. One time there was a man by the name of Basin. He was writing one day, and he was right, trying to write a song. He couldn't do it, and he didn't know what to do. And all at once, there was a song came to another man, but he didn't know what he could. And he stood, he said, oh my, he said, in the room. And suddenly there came the Spirit of God upon him. He grabbed his pen, and he wrote, oh, hail the power of Jesus' name. The angels prostrate all, bring forth the word of God of him, and crown him, Lord of all. Oh, God, when he calls me, who had never seen daylight, standing in the room one day, God came upon his blind foot, and when she did, she wrote, Ask me not, O oh, gentle Savior, hear my humble cry, I want to learn how to call you, do not ask me, why, thou art a stream of all my comfort, very life to me, who may have all this beside me, who can heaven but thee? That's right. I never knew what living he loved me, dying he saved me, buried he carried my sins far away. Why did he justify free forever? Someday he's coming on glorious day. What is it? God and his people, God and his prophet, God and his servant, God and his prophet, God and his healing. What is God showing us good and God? Do you believe it? That's right. Is God in his creation? You believe it? Is that right? Is God in his world? Do you believe it? Was God in his son? Do you believe it? Was God in his people? Do you believe it? Has it been proved that he shared it out? I believe that God the Holy Ghost swaying over this building right now wants to say that he and every person in there. God is in his people. How can we live by time when he calls out sin, calls out sin? How do you? How do we think of crazy? Then we do. But I don't think so. I didn't lose my mind in the world of time, the mind of Christ. I love you more than I can. I don't think you may call it whatever you want to. You call the Holy Ghost fanaticism if you want to. But one day I will 
was there and I was Christian. One day I was dying and I was clean. One day I was tired and I was fine. He raised me. One day Mary and brother said, Mr. Graham, I'm sorry to read this verdict to you, but you are finished. Two years ago they told me, you are finished. And the night of the best help I ever was, God still in his people. Hallelujah! Give him a hand! Give him a hand! That's accepted! Have I proved it to you? Isn't the truth say amen? Our Father of God, we pray now that you will pour out yourself tonight upon this people and may they everyone be healed. Pray now, Lord, our heart for the sake. Oh God, may your spirit come upon your poor humble servant and may sins be called, may people be healed. Of all manner of diseases here tonight, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.